Hello there, my fellow digital creator enthusiasts. So I have a question for you. Have you ever had one of those moments when you stumbled upon a golden opportunity that was just right under your nose? Well, that's how I felt when I discovered the magic of selling homeschool printables on Etsy. So go ahead, grab a cup of tea or perhaps a coffee. I've got my oat milk latte here beside my laptop. And let's go ahead and take you on a journey to this untapped treasure trove. Honestly, there is so much in this video that you just have to watch all the way to the end. All right, so just quickly, if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Alicia. I'm an Etsy shop owner and digital product creator. And today I have so much goodness to share. So did you know that the homeschooling movement is booming? And with this surge comes an insane demand for quality educational content. In 2016, 3.2% of students were homeschooled in the US. By 2020, 4% of students were being homeschooled. And in 2022, there were 4.3 million homeschooled students. Currently, the number of homeschoolers who are school-aged children in the US is 6.73%. Now, these stats don't lie. Homeschooling numbers are on the up and up. And if you're wondering why, well, think individual attention, custom curriculum and flexibility. Now, with a boom such as this, it also comes as a pressing demand for high quality educational materials. Honestly, I've seen some jaw dropping Etsy success stories, shops that have hit the jackpot with their unique, engaging and fun worksheets. So why can't the next Etsy success story be yours? So why do homeschool printables on Etsy make for an excellent side hustle? Firstly, it allows for flexibility. You can whip up worksheets while the kids are napping or on a lazy Sunday. So you can do it whenever you want. Your shop, your rules, right? Secondly, with these printables, you can monetize your skills. So do you have a knack for design or a background in education? Here is where you can start cashing in on your skills. Homeschool printables is a great niche for creating evergreen products. So homeschool printables can be sold all year round. And because you can create them once and they're digital products, you can sell them over and over again. Homeschool printables appeal to a diverse audience from toddlers just learning to scribble and color in to teenagers who are solving complex equations. There is a market for everyone at any skill level. And this, my friend, is where the magic happens as this allows you to micro niche and get super specific on the types of printables you sell. Now, diving deeper into specific niches within the homeschool printables is where the real gold is. By specialising in certain niches like age groups and skill level, this can mean less competition and more devoted customers. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, Alicia, that's all well and good, but how do I uncover these hidden niches? Well, please let me introduce you to a newfound Etsy research tool called Everbee. Now, this tool can be your guiding light into revealing what customers are really searching for. Now, I've used my fair share of different tools for researching products and shops on Etsy, and I've shared them here on this channel and within my workshops and courses, but I have to say Everbee is quickly becoming my favorite. So in this video today, I'm going to share with you how to use Everbee to research sub niches within the homeschooling niche that we are going to use to create a homeschool printable. So how does that sound? Sounds like fun. Seriously, there is so much goodness in store for you within this video. So be sure to stick around to the very end. Okay. Okay. So in a moment, I'm going to hop on over to Etsy. And with Everbee installed on my browser, we are going to uncover a homeschooling sub niche or micro niche. Okay. And once we have discovered this niche, I'm going to share with you a full step by step tutorial on how to create this printable using Canva. Beyond this, I'm also going to share with you an incredible resource, a course by my friend Mitzi, where you can dive even deeper into this incredible niche and build your online empire with educational and homeschool printables. So if you are excited, let's go ahead and jump right on in.
So with Everbee installed onto my browser, I'm now going to have the option to access all of Everbee's um, Etsy research tools whilst I'm actually browsing on Etsy. This is such a great feature of Everbee um, and it just makes it so easy to just access the product analytics and keyword research as you are researching within Etsy itself. I love this feature. Another great feature about uh, having ever be installed on your browser when you are searching within Etsy so searching here it will actually give you stats on the monthly um, searches for that keyword phrase very quickly you can get an idea of how many people um, how many customers on Etsy are searching for that keyword phrase per month okay so it gives um, so based on you know those numbers that come up you get an idea on whether or not that's something that you would like to pursue because we're talking all about homeschool printables, let's go ahead and just start typing in homeschool printables into um, the search bar. So homeschool and then Everbee is going to start working its magic here. So you can see that we've got uh, the monthly searches for just the phrase homeschool. But we want to go a little bit further. We want to type in printables. And then based on the uh, search term homeschool printables, um, Everbee is showing that we have a 1,223 monthly searches on that, um, that phrase. So let's go ahead and click enter on that. And we're going to get all of the um, listings that have homeschool printables um, within either the title, the description or in the tags themselves. OK, so when we scroll down, just disregard this top section here. What we want to look at is how many results come up for this keyword. So for the keyword phrase homeschool printables, 103,000 results appear. Now, even though we do have 1,200 people searching, there are 103,000 uh, results for that keyword. So it makes it very difficult to compete with that many listings, right? I mean, by all means, um, there is a possibility that you can come up in the search results for that keyword phrase, but the chances are a lot less likely. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find results that, you know, have maybe about half that or, or less. And the way we can do that is by niching down or sub niching. So what I like to do is I like to just search on through the Etsy results here and you're going to see all these different types of homeschool printables come up. So here we've got tracing worksheets. So that is a sub niche of the homeschooling printables. We've got, if we scroll down here, a busy book with different activities here. We've got sea animals. So these are all the sub niches within the, um, the broad um, keyword phrase. Here is an I spy um, worksheet. So that's a great, another great idea. So what you want to do is you want to just dive deep into all of these, just search over them um, to see what kind of printables are available. And from here, you also want to have a look at um, the titles. So what are they using within these titles that would be a sub niche? Here we've got um, preschool, pre-K, kindergarten. So that is a niche. So the age group is a niche. Here we've got educational posters. Here we've got a color matching game. So that could be another great sub niche to go into. Here we've got um, preschool shapes cards. So um, flash cards for um, identifying shapes. Here we've got like um, a coloring in worksheet. Human anatomy could be another one. So all you want to do is just take note of a lot of these and then perhaps create a spreadsheet where you can list all these sub niches that you have discovered. And then once you have like a list of them in a spreadsheet, like five or 10 of them, then you can use Everbee to research them even further to see if it's a viable niche on Etsy. Okay, so here we've got the color matching again. So let's say we wanted to dive deep into color matching homeschool printables. Well, what I would do is I would scroll all the way back up to our search results here and where it's got homeschool printables um, maybe I put in homeschool color matching and see what comes up I'm gonna hit enter on that 
And as we can see, the search results for this is a lot less. For homeschool printables, we had 100,000. For homeschool color matching, we've only got 1,400 results. Anything under 2,000 is a really good niche to um, dive into. So now let's say we wanted to see what the best selling products are for the homeschool color matching keyword phrase. Okay. So what I would do now is using Everbee here on the side, I would go to product analytics, and then this is going to give us all the analytics for homeschool color matching. So this keyword phrase, and it's going to give us a deep dive into um, that keyword so we can see whether or not it's something that we may want to pursue. What I like to do once I'm in here in the product analytics is I like to search by the monthly sales or the monthly revenue. I want to know um, what the potential is for selling this individual listing. The beautiful thing about this is that you can add things like the homeschool color matching printables into a bundle, which could be used to create a brand new product listing on Etsy. Um, and I do know that those busy books and those homeschool printables bundled up all together really do sell very well. OK, so just looking at this, let's go and search the entire database. So let's go ahead and click on that. So that way we are um, you know, scraping all the data from the entire database based on the homeschool color matching uh, listings. And then what we want to do is we want to search by monthly revenue. So let's go ahead and click the arrow button. It might go from zero. Yep. Let's go ahead and click on that again. Perfect. So now we get a good idea on um, the kind of sales that these shops are getting. So we can see here for this um, preschool, preschool learning binder. So I'm guessing that one of the color matching uh, worksheets is within this binder. The monthly revenue for that is 450 US dollars, six monthly sales. And the price of that is actually 75 US dollars. That may be a physical product. So you just want to take note of that. We do want to look at um, digital products for this. Um, and also another thing that you might want to look at is the listing age. Um, how long ago was the listing actually posted on Etsy? If we can keep it like within, you know, under 12 months, then that's probably um, better for us because we are going to be new sellers in this niche. Okay. So here, for example, we've got this color matching uh, activity worksheet. The listing age is nine months and is bringing in a monthly revenue of 224. Now, looking over this, it might not seem a lot, right? You know, we're used to seeing like thousands of dollars in US revenue. But the beautiful thing about this is that firstly, this listing is only nine months old and it's just one. So can you imagine if you went ahead and sub-niched and found other types of educational worksheets or homeschooling printables, you could really skyrocket your sales because, you know, this is sales for just one of the worksheets. OK, so you can see here, here's another color matching printable, another one here and so on and so forth. Now, from here, we can dive even deeper into these products by just going ahead and clicking on that listing. And then Everbee is going to give us even more details based on um, this product. So you can see here, we've got that deep dive. So we've got the 40 monthly sales, total sales, 386. The listing month is nine months, like we said before. The um, average conversion rate is quite good and um, a visibility score of 100, which is perfect. It also will give you um, a few different keywords associated with this product and this listing. So this is a great way to find other sub niches within this niche. So here we've got toddler activity. So perhaps you could search and do product analytics on toddler activity. You could do um, preschool or worksheets, childcare potentially. So people um, even that are not in the homeschool niche, but are in the childcare niche, preschool pack, quiet workbook, um, and so on and so forth. So lots of information here. What you do want to look at is the competition versus the volume. So how many searches, so the estimated average searches per month versus the competition. So how many listings we want to try and keep this as low as possible. So something like the preschool pack would be a great, um, sub niche or a great keyword to perhaps do more research on. Okay, so that's how I use Everbee to um, get as much information on a niche as possible. So based on this information, 
I'm going to go ahead and dive deeper into this product listing to see what it's all about, what's included, and then perhaps go ahead and start creating a printable based on this product. Okay, so to um, view this on Etsy, I'm just going to go view on Etsy and it's going to open up a brand new tab and it's going to give us this listing. So we can see here um, Etsy is calling this a bestseller within this niche. This product is in demand. So these are all great sales signals. So four people have bought this in the last 24 hours. We've got um, the title here that we can use as inspiration. And then I would go ahead and have a look at the um, images here. So the listing images. So we know um, what perhaps we need to include within our Etsy listing and our product to make it um, a desirable product. Okay. Um, additionally, go ahead and check out the description here. I would also go ahead and look at the reviews. So if there are any reviews perhaps that um, are not so desirable, you could use this as information to improve the product for you to sell on Etsy. So I will leave a link to Everbee in the description box below. That'll give you access to a free trial of Everbee. But in order to get a lot of the, um, the data and analytics that I've shown you here in this tutorial, you will need to upgrade. But just give it a go. See how you like it. Um, and if it, um, it's a good fit for you, be sure to go ahead and check that out. All right, let's go ahead and dive on in to creating a color matching activity worksheet for the homeschool printables niche. Okay. So based on our Etsy research, we know that a color object sorting a printable worksheet is something that we want to create. So in order to create it, I'm going to be using my favorite design software and that's Canva. Now I am going to share with you how you can use the free version of Canva, but if you do have the pro version of Canva, by all means, go ahead and use that one to create this printable. Okay, so the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you want to actually create the artboard for our project. In this case, I'm just gonna be designing an eight and a half by 11 inch um, design, which is uh, the US letter size. So let's go on over to create a design, click on that button there, and then we are going to go to custom size, or you can type in US letter. So let's try that, US letter. And we want the uh, the portrait version, so eight and a half by eleven inches. Let's go ahead and click on that, and then it's going to open up our design. So in order to create this printable, what I'm thinking is creating a page that will have um, each jar with the uh, you know a certain color like blue, yellow, red, etc. And then I'll include separate pages that will include the clip art that I want in this document. Now. You can go ahead and see if you can find the clip art within Canva itself. So let's say we wanted to go to elements and you wanted um, a um, to do the, the, the theme yellow. So you could put in yellow here and then maybe duck. Go search yellow duck and then go to uh, graphics. And then here in the um, toggle button, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are selecting free elements because some of the Canva Pro elements aren't allowed to be uh, resold. So you're just better off sticking with the free elements. So go to free here. And then these are all of the elements that you can use um, within your printables to then um, sell as PDFs to your customers. So let's say we wanted to do yellow. We could go ahead and click on the yellow little ducky here. And then we can go and search for other objects or animals that have a, a yellow color. So if you wanted to select this bunny, for example, you could do the bunny. And because these are uh, in the similar collection, in a similar collection, you're going to see that they um, all match up. And that would probably be the best way to do it. So let's go to see all. So here are some other elements. So let's say we wanted to do green. What I would do is I would add a new page and then go and select the frog. Maybe select this diamond shape. And let's say we wanted to do pink. Obviously you would select more. I would probably try and get up to maybe between eight and 10 of the clip art of the um, the objects, the colored objects. So if you were going to do pink, you would get the pink button here. Sorry, the pink pig, the pink heart. 
These are cute. Um, so if we wanted to go back up to yellow, there's a yellow star here. There's a yellow moon. A yellow flower. Okay, so you get the idea. So you would go ahead and do that for all the colors. If you're going to do purple, maybe you would select this one. Here's another green element. So let's go up to green and select green. So that's how you would do it if you wanted to select some of the elements within the Canva free account, okay? But if you do want to save your time um, and get all of this pre-done for you, I have found a bundle on Creative Market um, that has this already all done for you. So I'm just going to pop over to Creative Market now and share with you what I found. So here we've got 244 objects all sorted in the colors already for you. So what you could essentially do is just grab each one of these bundles. So the yellow, the blue, the red, so on and so forth. Add these to your um, to your document in Canva and then um, save that as PDF for your customers to download, print, and then your customers can use that for their homeschooling projects. The beautiful thing about getting something like this is that you can use it for more than just your color sorting printable. You could use this for so many different homeschooling projects or homeschooling printable worksheets that you could, um, you know, you could create an entirely new Etsy shop that just focuses on um, homeschooling worksheets and printables okay also additionally if you are interested in furthering your skills and knowledge on creating homeschooling printables my good friend Mitzi who has a, a homeschooling printables course it teaches you all the ins and outs on how to create multiple printable worksheets well then these are going to also come in handy with some of the tutorials that she shares within that course okay so I'm actually going to grab this bundle. I'm going to purchase it. Um, I'm going to purchase it under the commercial license here. So make sure that you're using this under the commercial license. I'm going to purchase this and then I'm going to import some of these into my Canva account. And then I'm going to share with you how we're going to use these to create our, um, our sorting printable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'll see you back in Canva in just a moment. I just also thought I would mention that I will leave a link to this clip art bundle um, within the description box of this video so you can go and check it out and purchase it if you feel like it's right for you. Okay, so we're back here in my Canva account. While that file downloads to my computer, it's quite a big file. What I want to do is start with a brand new fresh artboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file, create new design. And then I'm just going to go again to US letter, eight and a half by 11 inches. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our design here ready to go. So I think what the best option is to do is to start creating um, our sorting jar. Now, again, what we want to do is we want to go to the elements tab. In the search elements, let's go to jar. Or you could do bucket or you could do... Um, box you know it's up to you what you want to do here in this case I'm just going to do jar so let's go uh, let's go lolly jar and see what comes up there now maybe we don't want to put lolly jar because now all the lollies are going to appear so let's just go to jar and let's go um, depending on whether or not you've got the pro version or the uh, free version of Canva so these crowns identify the the element as a, um, a pro element. So these are for pro users. Um, so let's go ahead and for the purposes of this tutorial, let's go ahead and stick with free. So let's go to free. Very good. And it's going to sort all of our graphics by free. Now you could use the frames here, but I think the elements is probably our best bet. So let's go to um, graphics. And now here is where you would search for the jar that you would like to use um, for your sorting. Now, um, you could go for something real simple, just like, a, you know, a lined version with black lines and perhaps you could change the color of the lines um, to the different colors for the sorting. Or you could choose something like this. Um, let's have a look and see what else is available. Something like this might be cute because then you could change the color of the actual the cloth and ribbon. So let's go and add a page. 
sometimes it's all about just um, picking them and then seeing uh, what suits. Now we can't change the color of this, so that might not be a good option. What about this one here? This one here, you could change the color of the lid. That could work. And then you could put, perhaps type in blue on the lid here. It's kind of cool. What else have we got? I'm just going to go through and um, see if I can find something that I like. Okay, so I decided to go with this one right here. I like the fact that I can just change really quickly and easily the um, jar lid color. Now I want to add the color in here on the lid. So let's go ahead and select a, a, a font here. So go to text and then just go ahead and add in any font here. So add in the title and let's go ahead and see if we can find a fun, playful font. So sometimes you can actually type in here um, fun or kids or children and then we can see what comes up my computer's running a little slow because we're downloading all of those um, elements that we just purchased from creative market okay so there's more sugar which is kind of fun and playful so just go through um, all of these different fonts here um, just making sure that you, if you are using the Canva basic account, um, that you'll obviously only be allowed to access the um, non-pro elements here, the non-pro fonts. I think I'm going to go for Bobby Jones Soft. We're going to change that to maybe a white. There we go. And let's type in blue. Perfect. What you can do is you can go to the effects button and we can warp this so shape it so that it's got a curve to it. That could be kind of cool. Um, perfect. Now just keep in mind that some of the colors, uh, the text will be longer. So maybe you can make it a little bit smaller. So go to effects again. Let's go like that. Perfect. Okay, that's great. So now let's go ahead and do this for a few more different colors. So I'm going to duplicate and then I'm going to change this one to red. We're going to change the lid color to red. Let's go yellow. Very cool. Let's change that to a yellow so we should have six for now perfect so we've got blue red yellow green purple and orange so that's our jars essentially done for our worksheet so my clip art has just been downloaded to my computer so what i would do now is i would go ahead and start uploading these um, to my canva account so all of those clip arts to my canva account um, and probably pop them into a new folder so that way um, it's easily accessible. So all you need to do is just go to your upload section and then just start dragging those elements into your account. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so those elements are starting to um, load into my account now. So what I did is I just grabbed 10 of each color. So I've got orange, green, blue. I think I've got purple in there, yellow, but they're just still uploading. So what you might also notice is that a lot of the colors within these elements are of the same hue. So like the purple look all the same, the orange looks the same, you know, it's all matching, the green looks the same. And therefore it might not quite match up with our, um, our jar lid colors. So what I would probably recommend doing is like, so if we go to green, we can see the green here doesn't quite match up. So probably what the best thing to do is to... Um, Add in a couple of these, like perhaps this um, little iguana here. Whoops, 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 whoops. This iguana. And then what you can do is you can select the green lid again, go to the color, and then you can select one of the photo colors here. So let's say we wanted that, and then now it's going to match up a little bit nicer. It'll look a little bit more coherent. 
it just looks visually more appealing for the printable. Okay, so now what I would do is I would go ahead and so for the blue, I would add in a page just after the blue jar and then that's where I would start adding in the elements. So let's go scroll down. So here we've got these blue elements. Let me just change this blue color. So let's say I wanted um, this lolly. We can see that blue is definitely different. So let's go to this blue. Perfect. Just go ahead and delete that. Now here is where we're going to add in all of our blue elements. So all you need to do is just click on them, click on each individual one. And that should be all 10 of them. And then what I would do is highlight them all and then just resize all of them. So that way we can get them to fit within our printable here. Okay. Some of them are going to be bigger than others. You can see that this bucket is bigger than the fish. The whale probably can be resized. If you need to, you can always um, split them onto two pages if that makes it easier. But you just want to keep in mind that these are all going to have to fit within that jar. So you do want to make them perhaps a little bit smaller. Very good. Try and stay um, as far away from the edge of the page as possible. So that way when printing at home, it'll actually fit okay. Perfect. Okay, so that's all of our blue elements to go along with our blue jar. Now all you need to do is just go ahead and do that for the rest of them. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that now. So we'll do red. Okay, so that is all the colors done. So if we scroll all the way to the top, we've got our blue jar with our blue elements. We've got our red jar with our red elements, our yellow jar with our yellow elements, our green jar with our green elements, our purple jar with our purple elements and our orange jar with our orange elements. Now, once you are happy with everything and the way that it's laid out, probably what I would do is maybe create an instructions page so perhaps maybe at the at uh, the end or the beginning maybe at the beginning um oops we don't want to delete it we want to add a page so add a page here here is where i'll pot potentially put in um some instructions for the parent or teacher and then add another text box Okay, so there's just a little simple little instructions manual on what they could do. Perhaps you could even copy that. If you were to like print it out yourself, you could potentially put in like a photo of it. Okay, so there is our worksheet ready to go. Now what you would do is you would label this. So label it something like color sorting printable. When you're happy with everything and the way that everything looks, all you need to do is save this as a PDF. So go to the share button, go to download. We want to select the file type as PDF. So PDF for printing and then go to download and then that's going to save our document to our computer ready for us to upload to our Etsy shop. Once that's downloaded, I'll open it up and share with you what it looks like. Okay, let's open that up. Okay, so here is our PDF document, including all of our worksheets ready for our customer to download from our Etsy listing. Once they purchase it, they can download it 
print it off and then use it with their kids at home. Now, if you're interested in this tutorial, you, you're thinking to yourself, yes, I really do want to go all in in homeschooling worksheets and printables then I really do encourage you to check out my friend Mitzi's course. I'm just going to open it up now and just share with you a little insider look into what you can expect with this course. Honestly, if you are thinking about starting an Etsy shop with um, homeschooling printables, this is the way to go. So once you've signed up for Mitzi's Homeschool Printables Techniques to Create for Profit course, all you need to do is go on over and click inside. And then here is the dashboard and um, the lessons that are included. So you're going to see here you've got um, the welcome a module so Mitzi goes into great depth of what you can expect when you jump into this course and what you're going to learn. Module one is going to share you some simple techniques to create content for fine motor skills. So we're just starting with the basic skills here. So this runs through how to create um, like scissor cutting skills worksheets. Um, the next module is um, advanced techniques for fine motor contents. In this lesson, you're going to run through how to create more advanced scissor skills worksheets. In module three, you'll learn how to create alphabet worksheets, but this is a more advanced lesson. So thinking beyond just creating like um, letter tracing worksheets. So you'll learn some great skills in um, module three. Module four is so cool. So in module four, you're going to learn how to create popular sequences and sentences using different clip arts and words. And it's just fantastic. And I just love Mitzi's train of thought and how she thinks about things and how she kind of expands on different ideas that you can um, create and just you know, really the worksheet ideas are endless and um, Mitzi gives you some great ideas. You can also create engaging written content. Um, this runs through how to use um, AI to create really fun and engaging written content to include in your worksheets for probably kids aged between um, 7 to 10. So she's really got like a broad range of different um age groups are targeted in these uh, tutorials. And then it goes on to module six, which has the homeschooling products that parents can't get enough of, in-demand products that sell for English class in lesson seven, and module eight products that sell for math class. And obviously some bonus content here as well. So if you are seriously thinking about creating homeschooling printables, then this really is the training for you. I really highly recommend um, checking it out. Go ahead, have a read over the sales page and see if Mitzi's course is right for you. Okay, I hope this has inspired you to go on and create your own homeschooling printables and start creating digital products to build up your passive income on Etsy. Okay, I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.